Hi, I'm Matthew Yakubowski, Senior Curator of Fashion and Material Culture at the Brooklyn Museum. And today we're here to have a discussion about our most recent exhibition, Terry Mugler, Couture et Seam. Couture et Seam was an invented word which meant extreme couture, which Terry Mugler was a master of. I think one of the things we also think about Terry Mugler is that he's so much about transformation, about metamorphosis. And it's really been uh, at the front, forefront of the conversation around this exhibition about how he wanted to give people the feeling of power, that they were stronger than they really were. Today, we have our guests. Um, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I am Detox, world famous drag superstar extraordinaire and vintage collector of Terry McLean. Hello, I'm Connie Fleming. I am a Mew Glaret. I first started to model for Terry Manfred in 1989. And I've been a lifelong fan and uh, love Terry. Moi. My name is Ben. I'm a total Mew Glaret crazed fan and just a fashion freak all around. I think one of the things that I like, and I think you like too, is that Terry Mugler has been so much about self-expression. This philosophy that you could be something more. For me, it was about uh, dreams and him enabling you to dream your best self. and make you feel comfortable to express what you really were inside or wanted to be. I feel like my love um, and adoration of the silhouette that Mugler was so known to do was a part of the reason why I started, you know, transforming my body and also wearing things that were more structural because it is, you know, a severe image that I always want to in some way encapsulate. And I feel like when I was younger and seeing the shows and seeing Connie, like you especially in the shows, seeing all of these otherworldly creatures took me to a place where I was like, that's the world that I've always dreamed of being in and wanting to live in. Like who Detox became when I first started, you know, actually going out and dressing up and, and coming up with my drag persona and character. It's so funny because I'm a student now, but I used to be like a huge drag race fan and I went to DragCon and met you when I would think I was like 12 or 13. Aww. And that was like a huge moment where I was like, wow, this realness is like, and the whole image and the glamour and the sculptedness is like, it's real and it's something so tangible and impactful on just like a, a new plane. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Fashion's really helped you define yourself. Fashion has helped you to describe yourself to the public, uh -huh. yes. Definitely, mm -hmm. um, because it, it, it is uh, what is seen even before we sort of, our eyes meet and we start to communicate. It is what, um, it's an unspoken sort of language. It's oftentimes that we're looking back for inspiration in order to move forward. Terry didn't do exactly Joan Crawford. He took it and then he created more of the silhouette. It was a very specific look and a specific time, claiming of femininity. Mm -hmm. And I think Terry sensed that and gave you a powerful woman like a Joan Crawford, mm -hmm. but sculpted it more. How about for you, Ben? I've really started to think about how I need to shop for a little more of a like grown up look, thinking about how I can wear silhouettes that are gonna enunciate sort of a strong masculinity without it being this like gross, skeevy finance guy, <laughs> suiting, I don't know, kind of look. I want it to be strong and that it's hard to find sometimes. You would spend 
I think, hours getting ready to go out, mm -hmm. right? Because I work so much, my, my process of getting ready has, has tightened up and I have less joy in it. But there's days when I am able to bask in the like pampering process of pulling out my look and looking at it and having the music on and, you know, taking a long draw of my now vape pen now that I don't smoke cigarettes, but <laughs> having a glass of champs while I'm getting like the, the, the decadence of self-indulging yourself when you're getting ready, and I think that's kind of um, what fashion does to people. And clothing, which is as cheesy as it might sound to some of you people out there, hopefully not, it has a way of doing that to you. Yeah. It really has a way of releasing um, amazing endorphins <laughs> that make you feel kind. <laughs> you have to feel not only excited, but you have to feel confident when you're going out to face the world, and we all need that preparation moment to arm yourself to go out into the world and to say I'd like a burger <laughs> or you know I, I, I want that contract or I want this. We had several people from RuPaul's Drag Race come to the exhibition oh and one of the performers had actually Yes, did I saw. your outfit. I love, <laughs> oh my God. What does queer representation in the media mean to you? I think it was, you know, there was a time in the 70s, 80s where, you know, still on television, I think we all remember Soap when it came yeah. out and everyone was like, oh my God, there's an openly gay character on television. And people were turn, tuning in for that. Now we have whole, you know, whole channel. But it took a long time for that to happen too. Yeah. Yes. It took a long time for that to happen and to have it happen in a way that it was like queer stories told by queer people instead of having queer stories told from typically a cis heteronormative perspective. Yes. Um, and we're still having a lot of that. Which I mean, I'm 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 thankful and, and appreciative that we have a huge direction of where media is going and having so many of our stories told by our voices. I mean, that's one of the biggest you know achievements of my life is being on Drag Race and having a platform where I can be able to tell my story as a queer person for a queer audience and to have it be blown up so big um, and become so mainstream to another public that can look at our stories and see um, see themselves in us, not even necessarily identifying as queer people, but having a connection to us as human beings. And I think that's super important. When we just met at the, the gala opening for the first time, and I was so excited because we were both in tears. But I had looked up to her for so long as a kid and seeing her on runways and in all of these magazines and like doing all the things that she was doing and not even knowing about her history but then finding out about it as I got older I'm like how amazing was it for in 18 you know 1989 to have a trans beautiful model being revered in such a phenomenal way and celebrated um, and it you know gave me comfort when I was younger that that could there happen for hope. me there was hope yeah, yeah people in my community in the performance drag community said you know you can and I never thought I could then when I met Alix um, press attache at um, Mugler and he said oh what well, if you're ever in Paris come and see me yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Puff, puff, puff. <coughs> but it happened. And I was there and I had uh, quit performing and was within my transition. And I didn't feel like a freak. I didn't feel evil. I didn't feel wrong because I had sort of found myself and found my tribe, found um, that I could have an existence. And here was this opportunity and I was like, well, let's go for it. And I did and like, you know, now I look back and I'm like, I'm a little bit, wow, okay, this is cool, but it's still me in here, and I'm like, okay, I was 
just trying to make rent. That's what I was doing. We, we pushed, and, that, and that's what he was about. He was about pushing the envelope. I also think that you, in, in those moments, you don't understand, you don't understand what kind of an impact, because you're just yeah. living in that moment. So it's like, you're, you know, you're not a fortune teller, you can't read your, <laughs> read what's gonna happen in the future. And that was, even just doing Drag Race was a part of that. I had no idea what kind of like, not only just a cultural impact, but an impact that it would have on the younger generations mm -hmm. and younger queer people. Um, and what a responsibility I would end up feeling for that. And I think, um, you know, I don't know if I would appreciate it as much if I, if I knew that yeah. going into it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it like resonates, I think, more where I can actually look back at my, my past and be like, how, A, how did I make it out of my dire circumstances and being a, you know, suicidal <laughs> adolescent kid who, you know, didn't find any safety or have any support yes. to where I am now and able to provide that kind of support to other people and you've done that for me. Hopefully I've done that with someone like you and hopefully yes. you'll continue this on and do something like that for someone else in our community and I think that's really where the magic of our, our, journey, our journey is. Our, yeah. yeah. I think that as I came into fashion as an interest and I learned more about McGlare and the house and the models and the history, it was kind of a call that was like, he what it like, his clothing was incredible, but a bigger part of it was that he was revered for having models like you and these trailblazers not just stand in as wearers of his clothing, but as symbols of his clothing. So it wasn't just the look, it was what the look meant to be on these incredible trailblazers. And I think representation also past LGBTQ anything growing up, gay and Asian too. And I feel like all the, when I would flip through magazines that would come because of my sister, my mom, or they were sent to the wrong house, um, I would see all of these like, you know, I would see the Kate Mosses, but only recently I've, have I felt like I've started to see enough Asian representation that I feel truly represented and I think the way that Terry, as part of the LGBTQ community, um, continued to pass that on to his community. I, I wanna see designers that are not in our communities and designers that, don't, that aren't directly tied to our communities include our communities and continue to support our communities though they're not directly in um, an experience. But it, it, it is about, um all of our differences making us the same. Unifying us in all And of unifying that. us. Empowerment, ownership of your sexuality, ownership of your fierceness, mm -hmm. um, strength, you know, there's just like, those are the kind of things that like resonated with me the most when I first discovered. Um, even being a young, closeted, queer person, how it made me feel just like, the, the queerness celebration that a spectacle of the you know of the shows were and even the ads and like how everything was just in your face and unabashedly and unafraid to be queer and edgy and yes who he was 